Yeah. Okay, yeah. News about the pub opening early. I'm all for it, man. Um, pub's opening early. I'm all for it. Um, I want to go back to a pub and have a beer and sit down and watch men reminisce about their glory years. Bring it back, bring it back. And like I said before, it seems like, you know, all the gov- most governments around the world have really struggled uh, about, have really struggled working out a plan or, or putting something in place to ensure that businesses don't go under some sort of reopening plan. They don't really know what they're doing in that regard. I guess most of it comes from fear. They don't want to make a mistake and kind of prematurely reopen uh, the economy and businesses and then get blamed for the deaths of thousands of people and then essentially lose their power and their position. That's what they're mostly worried about. They don't want to lose their seat. I guess once you finally do become part of the ruling class, you do have a seat in the Houses of Parliament and whatever it may be, you have some level of influence. There's no way you're going to let that go in it, especially over something um, like COVID, that if you do take the precautions to be a bit safe and to play it kind of cool, no one's going to blame you for kind of being, no one's going to blame you for playing it safe right and being a little bit wary uh about opening business up again no one's gonna blame you but i think they owe it to the businessmen um business people in the uk who have essentially propped up the economy uh with their small businesses to help them out in some way shape or form especially the pubs right you the uk is you know we love our pubs we love our bars but we love our pubs more right they are sometimes a touch point for the local community they serve as a meeting point for adults they are probably contribute to a lot of really good mental health things right in terms of you know adults who might have you know essentially have their kids move away they're alone they don't really have much connection or human contact with people so go down to your local boozer get a pint and talk to your mates or talk to the locals must really do them a world of good and i can only imagine how much they've been suffering through this period during the lockdown so if it's kind of a shame that the government hasn't really stepped in and kind of really put out a plan or made their made them at ease to some some regard so the general thing in the uk is that everyone's been told or has the assumption that everyone's going to reopen on the 4th of July. But a lot of a lot of the people that have been represented by the bars and pubs union, whatever it is, right, or whatever, um, the, the individuals have come out and said, we need we need a bit more notice in order to kind of get things back up and running, right? Ordering stock, um, you know, making sure um, your establishment is fit for, is, uh, is fit for use. Um, obviously getting your staff off a, fall, off a furlough, maybe hiring a couple more if people are missing. They just need to get things up and running, right? They need to have a bit more notice in just a week or a couple of days. So they're kind of calling for the government to say something, but they, the government has been really hesitant to do so. Um, I would have thought because we've lowered our um, risk level, I don't think, down to like alert level, down to level three. So that might have kind of made things a bit better and in a minute kind of uh, notice would have gone out, but I've heard nothing so far. And this article kind of speaks about it on the BBC News that one pub chain owner has decided that regardless of what the government says, he's going to open on the 4th of July. So this is from the BBC News. It says pub chain has no choice but to open on the 4th of July. It says um, the founder of a pub chain, Oakman, in says vow to reopen all of these sites on the 4th of july even if the government has not relaxed the restrictions he says we cannot wait for the government to make the decision peter borg neil wrote on twitter the government has said pubs would not be open and uh, reopen until july at the earliest under lockdown measures but he has not given a definitive date for the reopening of pubs despite pressure from the industry mr borg neil's vow came as a british pub to trade body demanded a definitive date so that stuff could be prepared uh, but some health experts fear that opening venues such as pubs and restaurants too early could increase the number of coronavirus cases, especially as outbreaks reoccur in counties such as China. In countries such as China, sorry, to open without proper forward planning would be wrong, says Miss Borg, Mr. Borgnil. Now, obviously that's true, right? Things will. We know from what we've heard now from the leading scientists that the virus seems to spread a lot more in enclosed areas. I think I read a report from El País, a Spanish newspaper that basically highlighted some of the biggest outbreaks, I think, in Southeast Asia. And most of the outbreaks were in areas such as, you know, meat um, factories, um, offices, um, what would you call what do you call them kind of a lunch room sort of area enclosed area where there's not much ventilation and people are kind of packed into one area and you know yeah vent- ventilation poor ventilation is obviously another factor and being in close contact with people you know for a prolonged period of time so if that's the case that's a risk we're just going to have to kind of take in order to kind of restart the economy and of course bars and pubs could limit the amount of seating make sure people are standing require people to wear face masks if they're indoors unless they're drinking blah 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 these things will obviously help to mitigate something but you ha- you can't live you can't hope you can't kind of um 
without the vaccine, there's no way we can restart the economy without taking some calculated risk. Some risk will have to be taken, just how much you're willing to take. And I guess from what we've heard online or from what we've heard from reports, you know, what's it, the service industries or the hospitality industry is going to, what is it, like 3.5 million jobs or something, stupid alerts are going to go if they don't reopen within the next month or so, right? Um, I think hospitality accounts for what? Is it over 20% of this country's GDP? Like, it's insane. So to kind of not take the full not to, to not take the kind of you know to not take the uh the reins on this and ensure something is in place is really 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 big mistake from the government i think um it continues here it says do 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 here later the bbc they just told the bbc this is mr borg neil that i'm not trying to be some reckless rebel he said we need to plan ahead get staff off follow remove furniture install hand washing stations change layouts in pubs you can't just give us a couple of days notice and expect us to open safely very true he added um we would not open unless we thought it was 100 percent safe to do so oakman told bbc that he had not yet received any response from the government following his announcement but they wanted to stop us they would threaten with licensing review in which they would need to show that we've broken licensing laws i do intend to seek legal advice on this and this is interesting because this is reflection exactly of what happened in america right prior to the riots and the protest no one everyone had a lot to say when these some of these businesses especially in the south were deciding that they had enough of the lockdown the government weren't making in, the, the government weren't making things easier the loans were hard to get there was no protection the businesses were going to go under they had to do, they had to reopen because you know the tourism season was about to end they had to get some kind of income into their business so some restaurants some bars decided to reopen um against the orders of their state they live in some of them got shut down some of their business re licenses got revoked but the general consensus online was that these guys are reckless don't you know you're going to kill people how about my grandma blah 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 then suddenly the protests break out all over the world right and no one has a problem with all these people gathering outside, of course, for a very just cause. But the same amount of vitriol that was given to these business owners in the southern uh, parts of the United States, that you didn't get the same amount of vitriol to protesters, which is very interesting, right? Considering that the actual thing that's going to allow us to come out of this the other side is these small businesses, right? Um, as much as it's important for the states to have some level of police reform, right? Um, I'm sure they're going to enact some sort of change in the end, right? These protests have served some level of good. I've still, I'm still a big believer if that if they never protest, I don't think George Floyd's uh, killers and the police officers would have got charged, fired, or whatever, right? I don't think that would have been a thing. It would have been just another horrendous story we had on the internet, but nothing would have happened. I think the protests have really made a big change it's kind of awoken people it's changed the public conversation around police brutality but you can't deny that the level of um the level of understanding people have towards the protesters wasn't the same they had with small businesses it just wasn't continue um it says here da, 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 da. it says in a conflict situation he says, that, oh, he says, yeah, in a conflict situation, we might not open all the pubs immediately. I could just open one or two to see what they do, which I definitely agree with that approach. Um, on March 21st, the government brought the regulations requiring pubs and cafe restaurants to stop serving customers food and drink for consumption on the premises. Mr. Borgnell said he would have no choice but to open open in Drew Gardens in July, whether the regulations were still enforced or not. He said, we can hang around uh, and definitely go bust or open to see if they destroy us that's an easy choice to make though as a business business owner in it considering Oakman, Oakman inns and restaurants have 25 uh pubs spread across uh the south of england and midlands with plans to open three more the department of businesses ng and industry strategy has not responded to the request of comment um it says on thursday the british beer and pub association set out demands in a letter calling for a definitive opening date for the government by friday let's quickly see this a beer a pub in goes testing a possible pro let's see a bar in Milton Keynes testing a possible post lockdown system. Let's see what that looks like. Do you mind talking to your table, please? It says, could this be the pub of the future? What is it? No more queuing at the bar. Okay, lovely. It's nice. What happens there? People follow a one way system to sit between the perspect barriers. Nice. Like, and you have a pub really in it. Got your little booth. The, the Betsy win near Milton Keynes has been testing the layout. It did a trial service with furloughed staff and their families how awesome does it like honestly it's just with me how awesome does that look right a group of friends sitting around the table beer in hand a couple of pizzas sharing banter like how nice is that that's that's probably the that's probably another silver lining of, of the lockdown 
um, we've had an, an appreciation for the simple things in life, right? For those, I remember there was there was a thing when I was going away, when I was kind of traveling through South America and doing that whole thing, and that was a big thing about you know wanderlust and you know there was this kind of era of people following YouTubers who were going all around the world and I'm gonna visit every country in the world, this sort of stuff, right? That was a big thing, right? About kind of seeking something else outside of where you live, right? Um, that's where you were kind of kind of you know maybe find yourself or find some sort of you know I don't know whatever it may be. That was a big thing. And then I remember there also being a counter reaction to it of like, you know, if you're not having fun where you're at, if you're not really exploring your local environment, that's, you know, that that's where you're spending most of your time at. Where you, that's, you know, that's basically the the meaning of life, right? Trying to make the best out of the little that you do have, not going to other places to kind of seek some, to seek some kind of fulfillment. And I guess lockdown has provided that. It's particularly reminded us about what really is important in our life, right? Our friends, our family, our colleagues at work, um, the little things that we do outside of work that bring us a lot of satisfaction, whether it's, you know, going and doing a bit of window shopping, whether it's actually doing some shopping, playing computer games, uh, playing football, skateboarding on the weekends, going clubbing. These things that you actually love to do, but you, you sometimes just go through the motions. But lockdown has really shown you, hey, you need to appreciate this shit. It's not much, right? Going to a couple of festivals a year isn't as much as going to 10. Seeing your friends every weekend isn't the same as going IB for every weekend, but it's at least it's something, right? And it's really made you appreciate it. So now seeing this video of these people all jolly, sharing a drink, having a pizza, having a laugh, it just makes me think, fuck, that's the FOMO of having. Whereas prior, prior to COVID, the FOMO I was having was not being able to go to Bergheim, not, go, not being able to go to fucking Coachella or whatever it may be. But now I'm just missing the idea of sitting inside some dingy, smelly pub somewhere, um, having a steak and having a laugh with my mates. They said, Charles, this continues the video. It says, the results will help to inform the industry guidelines. Oh, look at the girl having a little piece. She's having a blast. It's brilliant <laughs> to be back in a normal environment. A sense of normality is what we need right now. There's been so much stress and pressure in staying in. I've had my beer here. Um, yeah, it's just been long overdue. It's not the same having one at home. So, yeah, it's been great. It's like having a, it's like having a, a bottle of Coke at home, right? Have you ever, because that's happened to me in the moment in Central America. Um, you know, most of the places in Central America, they serve you Coke either from a, like a plastic bag that they fill it with ice and they put a straw in it, which just, it's just, you know, you can't, you can't describe how tasty that shit is. Or you have the benefit of going to a bar somewhere and they give you it in a nice chilled glass bottle. And it always tastes different than when you get it here. You can buy glass bottles of beer in, I mean, glass bottles of Coke in the UK. I think Morrison's, Tesco, all these places sell them, but they don't taste the same. They just do not taste the same. There's something about being in that environment that sort of, I don't know what it does. It sort of like makes it taste more. It makes it more tastier. I guess the same for a pint, right? You could buy yourself a fucking draft machine. You could buy yourself a bottle of beer. Uh, you could buy yourself a, a whole box of tins of beer, chill them at the right temperature and pour them into a nice chilled pint glass and it still wouldn't taste the same at coming out from a warm tap somewhere in the middle of London. I don't know why. I don't know. It says pubs are closed for the 20th of March to tackle COVID. There will be a degree of reliance on customers being sensible, and for those that aren't, we, we might have to ask them to leave. But my expectation, based on 40-odd years in this industry, is that people will understand and they will want to work with us. Agreed. The government said pubs will reopen in July at the earliest, but we know there's anything so far, have we? Motherfuckers. But yeah, I don't blame the guy. Anyway, let's continue this article. End it here. It says, um, without this certainty, he said by the end of the week, many businesses in the sector will be forced to cut lot costs to ensure their survival through the extended period of financial uncertainty. He said this could result in hundreds of thousands of jobs losses and permanent pub closures. It said that pubs and beer businesses are burning through 100 million every month in cash while they remain closed. That is insane. 100 million they're burning through. God damn it. He says these costs could tip many pubs over the edge unless they're given the clarity and confidence on when exactly they can open. Um, other pub bosses also joined in the call for clarity. Mark Davies, chief executive of the Hawthorne Leisure Chain, said, Our pubs are part of the social fabric of our communities, but there's so much of our partners need to do to get ready for a reopening. From bringing staff off furlough to adopting new health and hygiene protocols and implementing social distancing measures, not to mention getting beer into the pubs from suppliers. If we were to stand by any chance, if we were to stand any chance of getting the, uh, getting the Great British pub to reopen by the 4th of July, it's imperative the government provide clearer guidance by friday at the absolute least latest it's now saturday no 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 fucking clarity insane enough
that's what I mean about being a, working in government. It should be it should be a requirement of like your the job to to understand how good you are at handling situations when the pressure's on or when things are not going your way, right? Or in kind of uncertain times. Being a good politician and no one to say when things are rosy is easy. Anyone can plan a street parade. But what do you do when we're in war? What do you do when there's civil unrest? What do you? Well, how do you respond then? That's actually a real marker of your governance, not you know the ability to put on a fucking V Day celebration. Anyone could do that. But hey, what do I know?